Hello and welcome back. I'm Barbara O'Neill. Today we're diving into the incredible benefits of exercise and how it can transform your health. Staying active is crucial for maintaining our health and vitality as we age. Exercise helps improve cardiovascular health, strengthens muscles, and boosts mental well being. It also plays a crucial role in managing weight, reducing the risk of chronic diseases, and enhancing overall quality of life. In this lecture, we'll discuss the science behind the benefits of exercise, different types of workouts to suit various needs, and practical tips to incorporate more physical activity into your daily routine. So stay tuned. Movement is life. Strength comes by exercise, and activity is the very condition of life. Stagnant pools breed disease, and stagnant bodies breed disease. And we've come to a time in Earth's history where people don't actually need to move that much because we've got cars and buses and trains and planes and vacuum cleaners and automatic washing machines, and people don't even use elbow grease to wash the showers now. They just use sharp chemicals. And because activity is not a necessary part of most people's lives, many people are getting sick because their bodies are not moving. A couple of times this week, I've referred to the blood as the river of life. It is the river of life because wherever the blood touches, it brings life. It brings nutrition. It brings water. It brings oxygen. And it takes away waste from every single part of the human body to every absolute extremity. One of the problems is when the body's not moving as it should, that river of life doesn't reach the extremities quite like it should. I'm amazed at the amount of people, even young people, tell me they always got cold feet. What does cold feet mean? There's no river of life down there because the river of life is warm. <laughs> so any part of the body that's cold, it's an indication the river of life's not getting there. And if the river of life is not getting there, death can start to happen in those parts of the body. Early in the week, we looked at the kidneys and we looked at how many people are experiencing cold kidneys because they're not wearing enough clothing in that area. That's when those little nephrons start to die because the river of life is not reaching them. And you know what the farmer does with the little lamb? He puts a little ring, a little tight ring around the top of the tail and it takes, I think, a couple of weeks and the tail falls off. Why does the tail fall off? There's no river of life in the tail anymore. And you talk to any farmer, they say it might sound cruel, but it's actually very kind because out in the, out in the paddocks when the, when the rain comes um, and it can get moist under that tail and maggots can get in and even start eating away parts of the sheep. So losing the little tail is actually a kind act, especially when you've got thousands of sheep. But my illustration is to show you the importance of that river of life. So anything that you can do to ensure a proper delivery of the river of life to every single part of your body means healing to that part of the body because the blood is the healer. And perfect health requires perfect circulation. Perfect circulation means my toes are as warm as every other part of my body. But what usually happens in the night when you're sleeping, everything slows down a little bit and we're glad because as we slow down, that's when the body starts to revive and recharge. But the river of life slows down to a nice quiet pace. So when you wake up in the morning, the blood tends to have pooled in the internal organs. And the best time to exercise is in the morning because it brings that blood right out to the extremities and basically sets up a pace for your body to run at all through the day. So even if you're going to be sitting most of the day, the fact that you've done an early morning workout means you've actually raised the rate, you've set a, a pace that the body will run at through the day. This proactive approach isn't just about physical health, it also boosts mental clarity and overall well-being. When we neglect movement, we hinder the body's natural ability to heal and thrive. Every part of our body depends on the continuous flow of blood to function optimally, from our fingertips to our toes. Good circulation ensures nutrients reach where they're needed, 
waste is removed efficiently, and our cells stay vibrant. Regular exercise also supports our immune system, lowers the risk of chronic conditions like heart disease and diabetes, and helps us live longer, healthier lives. It's not just about staying in shape. It's about ensuring all our body systems work smoothly and effectively. For exercise to be a powerful healing remedy, it must be done in the morning and it must be done regularly. This is called frequency. Frequency means done frequently. God designed that this living machinery be in daily activity and in that activity is its preserving power. For exercise to be a preservative, it must be done frequently. All the experts agree, you won't hear me say that much, but they do agree on one thing. Half an hour's exercise a day will keep the body in good working order. That's your maintenance program. Have you ever seen a house that hasn't been maintained? When we came into this health retreat here, it was not a health retreat when we came to it. In fact, the first time we walked into this building, I thought it looked like a sickness retreat. It had not been maintained. All the draining areas were all blocked up. In fact, Michael chipped back the grass one day and he kept chipping and he kept chipping at the back and he chipped back a full foot and he found a drain. And in the drain was an old boot and some old clothes. And because the drain wasn't, hadn't been maintained, the water was all coming in. And there was a lot of mould in this place. When I came here, I thought, how could this ever be converted into a health retreat? It had had no maintenance program. It takes a lot of work to build a house, but not a lot to maintain it. Well, we came in and there'd been no maintenance. And it took six months of a lot of workers to get this once again up to operating standards. It hadn't been maintained. We're maintaining it now. I meet so many bodies that haven't been maintained. Haven't been maintained. And some people say, can you get me, re can you get me fixed in a week? I said, whew, the body's an amazing piece of machinery, but whoa, that's a tall order a week. <laughs> How long since you've exercised? Oh, 20 years. <laughs> Do you know, with many human bodies, it takes 20 years of not treating it right before it breaks down quite badly. Well, I've got some good news. It's not going to take 20 years to get it better again. Did you catch that one? Won't take 20 years. Might take two. Take a month for every year you've done it wrong. <laughs> it's not year for year. That's the good news. We couldn't get this place ready in a week. It took six months of very hard work. And this is not a living machinery. Your body's a living machinery. And the miracle of the human body is what some bodies survive considering the conditions they've been given. But because the blood is the healer, anything that stimulates the blood moving a little bit faster is square one, paramount. Half an hour's exercise a day will keep the body in good working order. That's your maintenance dose. One hour's exercise a day will reverse major problems. What sort of problems? You name it. Start at the tip of your toe and go up to the tip of your head. And any problems in any area of the body, take a one hour exercise a day to get a reversal of major problems. Exercise is essential for keeping our bodies in top shape and preventing health issues down the line. Just like how you need to maintain a house to avoid problems like blocked drains and mold, our bodies also need regular care. When we neglect exercise, our health can suffer in various ways. However, the good news is that our bodies are resilient. They have a remarkable ability to bounce back and heal when we give them the right attention, like regular exercise. Exercise isn't just about physical health. It also does wonders for our mental well-being. It clears our minds, reduces stress, and helps us stay focused. Developing a routine of exercise, even if it's just going for walks or doing light gardening, can make a huge difference. It boosts our energy levels, improves our mood, and even helps us live longer. 
So whether you prefer hitting the gym or enjoying outdoor activities, staying active is key to a healthier and happier life. I read this in an old book. In a short while, you will so experience the benefits of pure air and exercise, you would not live without these blessings. Wow, can you see why I memorized it? Just love it. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the day. I'll look forward to it with excitement because when I get back, whoa, a friend of mine, young girl, recently told me this. She told me this last week. She said she was going out with a guy. They were having, you know, really enjoying each other's company. And then he said, look, I want a bit of space. And he broke it off. She was devastated. She said to me, I'd go to bed crying. I'd wake up crying. I'd have a shower crying. And I thought, she said, I thought I've got to do something. So she put her joggers on and went for a run, 5K run. Halfway through the run, she's feeling so good. You see, feelings went back a bit and decision part of the brain kicked in. And she said, what am I doing? And she could not understand how at that point that she was crying all the time because another part of her brain had kicked in. She got back, gave a little shake and thought, get on with life. <laughs> it totally changed the way she thought by doing that 5K run. So she started to do it every day. Got slim, got fit, started to smile more. Well, guess what? They're back together again now. <laughs> In other words, if you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're discouraged, if you're overwhelmed, what do you do? Put your joggers on and go for a walk. Dr. Neil Nedley in his book, Depression A Way Out, if he gets very severely depressed people, bipolar, schizophrenia, he puts them on seven hours of exercise a day. Hmm? Seven hours of exercise a day. This isn't seven hours of aerobic. The guy that walked around Australia, I'm sure at first the pace was like this. You just start where you are. Maybe the person walks around the village and then walks around the village again, stops for lunch, stops for a drink, just keeps moving. He said after seven days, these people are so improved they can go to a one hour a day maintenance dose. That's seven days of seven hours exercise a day. Now, when you look at how this guy conquered his cancer, is that a treatment for actually every single thing that happens? He says, restless legs, exercise. You, you name it, he says, exercise has to be an integral part of a recovery program and an integral part of a maintenance program. What type of exercise? By the way, before I move on to the type, that one hour a day, that can be two half hour spots or a half hour spot and a two 15 minute spots. But there must be at least a half hour chunk in that day. By the way, my husband watched me exercise for three years and then he joined me. I never said a word, never nag, because it never does any more, any good. Do you know when you go home, you're gonna be so excited about how you feel and what you've learned, you're gonna wanna share. But the only thing you can really share is what you do. You've just got to bite your lip and smile. <laughs> what are you smiling about? I just feel so good. Why do you feel so good? Oh, well, actually, I've just come back from... <laughs> you actually can only speak when you're asked. It's like we used to have all the staff eat at our table in our health retreat in Melbourne. And one day this guy came to me and he said, look, can you talk to my mum, who also was our cleaning lady and sat at the table, can you talk to my mum about what to eat to lose weight? Because, you know, she's putting on too much weight. I said, I'm not going to talk to her. He said, why not? I said, because I have no right to talk to her. Now, if she comes to me and says, can you help me with weight loss? Aha, we can talk. But until that time, I cannot. I said, I want people to feel comfortable at my table. He was a bit upset with me. I said, so be it. <laughs> Two weeks later, his mother came to me. Can you help me with weight loss? I said, sure. <laughs> Do you know what I used to say to them? You watch the slim girl at the table. Watch what she eats. Watch when she gets up and leaves the table. And watch where she is at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> She's out there walking. There is a formula. If you abide by the formula, it works. Exercise, as described by Dr. Neil Nedley and demonstrated through personal stories, isn't just about staying fit. It's a powerful way to boost mental and emotional well-being. Take the young girl's experience. 
After a tough breakup, her 5K runs became a lifeline, helping her think clearer and feel better emotionally. It shows how exercise activates different parts of the brain, leading to a shift in how we handle tough emotions. Nedley's approach goes even further, showing that for serious conditions like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, rigorous exercise can be a vital part of treatment. It's not just about physical health, it's about maintaining mental clarity and emotional stability too. This broader view of exercise isn't just about hitting the gym, whether it's jogging, walking, or any regular physical activity, it's about making lifestyle choices that boost our overall well being. By staying active, we can improve our vitality and build resilience, which is crucial for facing life's challenges head on. What does the human growth hormone do? The human growth hormone stops burning glucose as fuel and becomes a fat burner. And you can see why, because burning the fat will give more than twice the units of energy that the glucose will give. The human growth hormone also triggers an enzyme to be released that directly goes to fat stores to help break them down so they can be burnt as fuel. The human growth hormone also increases the body's ability to utilize protein. This week we've looked at the importance of protein. We've looked at the fact that every membrane around every cell in your body is 50% protein. We looked at the double banded helix strand, which is the DNA and the amino acid bands. We also looked at the ribosome where the new cell is made and it's brick upon brick upon brick to make the new cell. What are the bricks? Amino acids. Body cannot heal without protein. So number one, it's very important to be eating adequate protein. Number two, it's very important to be mindful of your gastric juices so you've got enough hydrochloric acid to break down the protein. And number three, it's very important that you move that body every day, get that at least 30 seconds going for it, causing a release of the human growth hormone so you can better utilize that protein. That also explains why once the human growth hormone's moving, once those muscle cells have been wakened up, the more fuel you put into that fire, the hotter it burns, the more effective it burns, and the more healing happens in the body. The human growth hormone also increases the circulation of the blood to the skin. The human growth hormone is also crucial for bone density and muscle mass. It stimulates the production of collagen, which is vital for maintaining healthy joints and skin elasticity. As we age, the natural production of HGH declines, which can contribute to signs of aging such as decreased muscle mass, increased body fat, and reduced bone density. Moreover, HGH has been shown to enhance cognitive functions and mood. It supports the regeneration of brain cells, promoting better memory and mental clarity. The hormone also plays a role in cardiovascular health by helping to maintain healthy cholesterol levels and improving heart function. For those engaging in fitness and bodybuilding, HGH can significantly aid in muscle recovery and growth, allowing for more intense and frequent training sessions. However, it's important to note that synthetic HGH should only be used under medical supervision due to potential side effects and health risks. But you know, you just start where you are, maybe a brisk walk, you just do what you can. And what if the ankles or the knees aren't working? Get an exercise bike, still doesn't work. Swim, swimming is excellent exercise. I was in Foster a couple of years ago doing meetings and we got an apartment by the sea. Have you ever um, booked an apartment by the sea or with sea views on the internet? Yeah, we had sea views about two foot of it <laughs> between the buildings. <laughs> anyway, we were one street back. When you read the internet, you think you're right on the beach. Anyway, we walked on the beach every morning and it's hard to get aerobic there. So I just kept running, keep doing bursts of running or jump down and do bursts of your, your um, push-ups. And there was a sea pool, how I love sea pools. High tide, the sea pool gets a beautiful flush out. 
So every morning I dived in the sea pool. Do you know what that, that quick cold does? Now it's July, so I'm in the sea pool 10 seconds at the most. But the, the sea water in the winter is a lot warmer than the creek water because of the warm currents that come through. So um, I was only in there about second, 10 seconds. And I don't know if you've experienced it this week. Please try it if you'd like to. Ha mention it to Howard, take a little towel, leave it down by the bridge maybe, and at the end of your exercise, dive in. And you'll find when you're coming back, your muscles are energized. We find after we've done our dip in the creek, we can almost run up those hills because that's what that quick goal does. It just energizes those muscles and just whoosh, gets that blood in very quickly. So I'm down by the sea pool, diving in every morning. So good. And there was a lady there. And I saw her there about three mornings. She had a wetsuit on. She had a little wetsuit hat on. She had a kickboard. She had flippers. And she would just go backwards and forwards. So one morning as she was coming near me, I went over near her and I said, excuse me, can I ask you a question? And when I got near her, I looked at this lady. She was in her 70s. Whoa. <laughs> I said, um, can I just ask you a couple of questions? She said, sure. I said, why are you doing this? Are you doing this for an injury? She said, no, this is my morning exercise program. She said, this works really well for me. Wow. Knees or feet don't work? Swim. Cold? Get a wetsuit. Can't swim? Kickboard and flippers. There's no excuse there, is there? Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this information helpful and feel inspired to incorporate more exercise into your daily routine. Remember, it's never too late to start and every bit of activity makes a difference. If you have any questions or want to share your progress, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more health and wellness tips. Until next time, stay active and take care.